Hey, welcome back. Simon Lee is here again. I've got a, a pro guitar tip for you. Well, this is actually the first part of a series that I'm going to do uh, talking about EQ as it relates to guitarists. Uh, I suppose I should start with uh, this is a journey into sound. Um, in order to understand EQ, you need to think about what sound is and how it's produced and what you know how it, what the different components are. Uh, sound is produced when something vibrates, basically. So, if you hear a voice, that's caused by vocal cords vibrating. When you hear a jackhammer, it's caused by the, the hammer hitting the, the the concrete or the road or the bricks or whatever it is that it's, it's breaking up. And the it, every sound has got a pitch. And the pitch depends on how, f how fast those vibrations are. How many vibrations do you get in a second? Um, when you only get a few vibrations per second, that creates a low note. When you get lots and lots of vibrations per second, that creates a high note. That's the, that's the way to think about it, you know. So, uh, so if you imagine a Geiger counter, if you've ever heard a Geiger counter, when the Geiger counter is far away from any source of radiation, you get the odd click um, and then the closer you get to, to to the radiation those clicks become closer together and when you get really close to the radiation you, you kind of get this say, say as you're going towards the uh, the source of radiation if you like it's like click 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 and as as the clicks get closer together what happens is the the pitch uh, or the note gets higher as the clicks get more frequent um, because each individual click hasn't really got uh, got a pitch as such, but when you put them together, uh, when you change the speed of the clicks, that's the same as vibrations, you know. And it's a bit like it's the same as a car engine or a motorbike engine, you know. It's like when you make it go faster, the pitch goes higher, you know. So it's like when a you know when 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 the engine's kind of running really slowly, you know, it's like brrrr, and then when you put your foot down on the accelerator, it goes brrrr, you know, because the engine's going faster, so the pitch goes higher. That's how it works. Uh, so the measurement of pitch, if you like, is is uh, how many vibrations you get per second of whatever it is that's vibrating. So, um, and when it comes to using a, a an equaliser uh, in, in a multi-effects processor or whatever, the the vibrations per second is measured in hertz. So it's the H Z part of the part of the thing. That's the frequency. So when people talk about frequency, what they're talking about really is notes. You know. So um, the low E on a guitar string that vibrates around about 80 times a second. You know, and that's when you get that. Oh, the low, the, the E on a bass, uh, so I've got one hanging up here, I can just... Now that's, that's the same note, but it's vibrating half as fast, that's only vibrating 40 times a second. I'm talking roughly, you know, if, 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 you, if you Google it, you'll find it's probably 41 point something, you know. But, uh, but yeah, roughly, that's, that's how it is. If I play the 12th fret on the E string, that's vibrating 160 times a second because because I've, I've I've halved it, so it's vibrated. The strings vibrating more quickly. You get a higher pitch. Uh, if I go onto the thin E string, um, that's vibrating roughly 320 times a second. You know because again you've halved it. Uh, well, the 12th fret of the E string would be double that. It would be 640. These figures are rough, you know, but it doesn't matter if. If you get a, you know close to uh, the frequency that you want to adjust, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, you know, it's obviously when you when you're playing the guitar, you're playing lots and lots of notes at the same time. So, uh, you, well, <laughs> if you're playing a chord, you're playing at the same time. If you're doing a guitar solo, you'll be playing a range of notes. You know, so uh, so you um, when you're sort of setting your your, your EQ. You're not going to be just setting it for one note, but I think you have to understand how it affects one note in order to be able to understand how it works. You know. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to record the purest sound that I can on on the guitar, and I'm going to, which is a harmonic, and you know, it's 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 not a completely pure sound, but it's pu it's fairly pure. So what I'm going to do, just hit record. Right, 
So, yeah, I just wanted that to... That's it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to loop that now, and we'll have a little play around with the EQ and see what's, uh, see what's what. Uh, so when that starts, let me just beef up the signal so I can see it. Uh, I'm going to set the start of the loop where I pick the string, or just after I pick the string actually, because I'm not too bothered about the initial pick for this exercise. Uh, and I want it to finish sort of before the note dies out too much, so I'm going to finish it about there. Let's try that. Right. Now if I go into my if I go into my equaliser section, now I mentioned, hang on a minute, I'm going <laughs> to, I'll stop that while I'm talking, I mentioned that the 12th fret on the E string is roughly um, three, uh, 640 hertz, so that's, it's vibrating, it's actually more like 660 um, so what I'm going to do is just find a setting on my equaliser which relates to that. So if I go to the EQ, uh, right, I'll use the low mid gain uh, to adjust this. So the low mid gain has got three controls, or the low, the low mid, sorry. You've got low mid frequency, low mid gain, and low mid Q. Uh, the frequency is what I've been talking about, um, and I adjust it in this little box. So What's the closest I can get to 660 hertz? 630, that's pretty close. Right, so I'll select that. And what I'm going to do is just try and change the volume of that and see what happens uh, using the low mid gain. That's the gain is, is basically a volume control. It's a kind of, it's a way of making things louder or quieter. Now, gain or volume is measured in decibels. Now on, on this sort of screen, uh, it doesn't say anything about decibels, it's just, a, it's just a number. At the moment it's set to minus six. Uh, but if I, if I adjust that, uh, well what I'll do, I'll start playing it, and whilst it's playing, I'll adjust the gain and we'll be able to see what the, um, what the effect is. Before I do that, I'm just going to make one more adjustment, and I'm going to set the low mid Q. Now, I'll come back to this but I'm going to set it to a high number uh, and then I'll, say, I'll just play, play that harmonic repeatedly and make the adjustment as it's playing. Now that's actually distorting. So we're turning it down to, to minus 20. It's changed the character of the sound. What it's done is I've kind of got rid of the, of the part of that sound, which, which is around about 630 hertz. Um, uh, sounds that you hear in real life, guitar, vocals, saxophone, any, anything, uh, you rarely get what you class as a pure sound. Uh, the sound will have, um, you can probably split it up into three sections, there'll be like a low frequency bit, there'll be a mid frequency bit and there'll be a high frequency bit. So you're actually getting several, uh, I suppose you can think you can, you're can you getting several notes at the same time. Um, the loudest one is what's called the fundamental and that's the actual note that, I'm, that I played on the guitar, that was the E. But in the background, very, very quiet, um, there'll be a, there'll be higher pitches uh, g going on, and they all kind of harmonise with each other. You can't really hear it as separate notes, but um, but that's what you're getting, you know. So that's why when I turn that down, uh, you can still hear uh, you can still hear the sound. The sound hasn't disappeared, but it's just that the main bulk of the sound, if you like, has got a lot quieter. Now. So I, I say, if I turn that up, do 
you can hear the, the sound became more, it, it went from like a ee to a oo, you know, it, was, it, it became more rounded um, as I, was, I sort of boosted the, the, the 630 hertz, which is, I say, it's pretty close to, to what the, what, how fast the string was vibrating there. Uh, so it was getting, it was making it more a pure sound, I suppose. That's the, that's the way to think of it. Uh, now then, if I change that frequency, and I'm going to change it to, I don't know, something, something extreme. I'm going to change it to 8 kilohertz. So... So I, I adjusted the wrong thing then, I was adjusting the frequency. I'll keep the frequency at 8 kilohertz and I'll, just, I'll adjust the gain, I'll adjust the volume. So if I set it to low mid gain, there we go. Now then. Now notice, I went through, I went from minus 20 decibels to plus 20 decibels and nothing happened it didn't it didn't affect the sound that's because uh, I've set the frequency to 8 kilohertz which is miles and miles away from um, the actual note that I was playing so it's having no matter what I do to that it's having absolutely no effect on the uh, on the sound you know on the volume of the sound Let's just play that again So, as far as the volume control goes, that, that setting is having no effect on the volume of, of what we're hearing, because the, 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 the frequency that I'm trying to adjust isn't a big part of the sound that's, uh, you, you know, I, I, I wasn't playing any notes anywhere near that sort of frequency. That would be like a really, really high harmonic. Now, if I drop that down to, I'll try a low frequency. Um, Let's try, I don't know, let's try 100 hertz and I'll adjust the, I'll adjust the gain of that. Exactly the same thing. Right, I'll get, I'll get a bit closer to it. So let's try 200 hertz. Again, nothing. I'm going to put it back to 600. 30 hertz and we'll just just remind ourselves what the effect of that was so you see that frequency because that is the same roughly the same as, as how the strings vibrating the speed the strings vibrating at that's why there's such a big effect, you know. And this brings me to the Q setting. Um, when you set the Q, the, the Q hasn't got uh, any units. It's not decibels, it's not sort of, it's not frequent hertz or anything like that. It's just a number. And the way you use Q is, I said nothing to do with James Bond. <laughs> uh, if you want to, center on a particular note and affect that note without affecting the notes around it you set Q to, to the highest value you can if you want to that, that's that's say if, if you've got a you might have a recording where there's a particular note which is really annoying and every time 
it might be a bass frequency, for example, you know, so, so there, there might be a note on the bass where every time the bass player plays that note, it's really loud compared to all the other notes. So what you can do is kind of use the frequency uh, control, or work out what frequency it is, select that on your EQ, uh, set a high um, Q value, and reduce the gain, and what you'll find is you'll be able to reduce reduce the volume of that particular annoying note, you know, uh, without affecting the other ones around it, you know. So that's that's one way you can use EQ. Uh, right. So if I if I set that, I demonstrate that. If I set that back to one. Uh, now. If I play that back and adjust the, the gain, we should have pretty much the same result as we have been getting. But now if I select um, 200 hertz, where before we didn't get any particular change in the, in the volume of the sound, and we'll try it again. So you can hear now when I change change the gain. Uh, that is having an effect, even though the, the, the frequency is set to, to 200 hertz, which is miles away from, from the actual note that I was playing. But because I've set the Q to 1, which is quite a low setting, uh, it's, it's still affecting that, uh, that note. Um, so, you know, you, to be honest, for, for most sound shaping um, effects, you know, so, so when, when you're changing your guitar sound, you probably would have the Q setting quite low so that, so that it didn't just um, change one note. Because, like I say, when, when you're doing a, a guitar so solos, guitar solos always tend to be... Well, I, I, I always think of guitar solos as being around about here, around about the, the, the sort of tw 12 fret mark halfway up the neck. So you want, you want to be able to affect that um, across a range of notes, you know, not just one note. So you might want to, I don't know, uh, go from, say, the 17th fret on the thin E to the, to the 12th fret of the A string, something like that, you know, and, and be able to control the, the, the overall volume of that range of notes. So that's, that's how you can do it, you know, you can sort of set, set Q uh, quite low, and then you can, you know, set, set a frequency that is somewhere in the middle of that range of notes. Um, to be honest, I still like um, 630. I sometimes use 800 because in practice, um, those frequencies tend to, uh, if, you, if you boost them rather than cut, cut them, um, they tend to, to make the, the high notes less scratchy sounding, um, which is what you want for lead playing, you know, it's, uh, so, so, so when you when you play in lead, you want a guitar sound that's a little bit more of a pure sound, you know, a little bit more of a vocal kind of sound. Whereas when you're playing chords, especially when you're playing uh, like heavy Metallica style rhythm chords, you know, um, where, you, where you want the 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 whole chord to sound massive, but also get separation between the strings. So. Um, you wanted to take away those frequencies, so I, I, would, I would sort of reduce the, the, the 630 or the 800 hertz uh, frequency to sort of get get rid of those, um, to, to, to make it sound less vocal. Because what happens is when you're playing chords, let me demonstrate. Um, so. So that's quite a nice full sound. Um, now I can make it possibly a little bit more impressive if I set that back to 630. And what I'm going to do is take that low mid out. 
Now you hear that, it's gone really deep sounding. Um, now if I turn that the other way, I'll turn the, turn the volume down. It's gone really boxy sounding. Um, you know, it's almost like a telephone sort of. You know. Now, if I turn it the other way, I can play the rest of the riff. Uh, you know, so that's that's the sort of difference you can make. Oh, I'm to make it even more extreme. The nice thing about that is when you get rid of that frequency, um, you know, around about the 6.30 or, well, I say I've got it set to 6.30 there, as you can see, um, it makes room for the singer. Uh, so you can have the guitar loud and still be able to hear the singer and the singer can hear himself, you know, but the overall effect is uh, it's a powerful sound, you know, that the, the, the band sounds powerful. Um, but this is why you need really to, ha to have an EQ pedal to switch from your rhythm sound to your lead sound because you can get a cracking rhythm sound which works in the band context but so if I, if I play some high notes now it sounds rubbish you know it's, it sounds scratchy and it sounds thin um, but if I turn that up if I turn it the other way Apart from the fact that it's distorted. Yeah, I might not want that much mid, to be fair. Uh, so again, if I take that down... You know, it's, it's that horrible scratchy sound. And the thing is, when you play in a band situation and you try and play and lead with that sound, you won't hear it and neither will the audience, you know, and you'll be going, you'll be turning your amp up and the sound engineer will be getting angry. <laughs> so you don't want that. Um, so this is why you need to get your, that, that that frequency is, is, is kind of valuable. You know, it's, it's, it's one you need to sort of know about. Um, okay. One more tip. I mean, to be honest, this might be, be all you need to know, you know, at least to get started with, with setting your, your, your guitar sound up. Um, but as a rule, when it comes to gain, uh, when you say, say you, you, your, your three main controls for EQ are frequency, gain, and Q. So when you're adjusting the gain, the gain is measured in decibels, dB. If you increase the dB by 6, you're doubling it, you're doubling the volume. Uh, if you reduce it by 6, you're halving it. So, you know, if you, if you want to use that as a rule of thumb, again, it's, it's, it's not, you know, if, if you measured it scientifically, you'd probably find a little bit of discrepancy, but as a rule of thumb that you can use in practical sense, that's, that's how you think of it, you know, so 6 dB doubles the volume. Uh, most EQ modules have got a, um, a level control and you can use that as an overall volume and that's usually measured in, in decibels as well. So, so if, if for some reason, if you, if you wanted your, your lead guitar to be twice as loud as your rhythm guitar, you wouldn't need to because if you set your, your rhythm sound uh, with, with, with a low mid-range, so, so if you cut, cut the mid-range to say minus six, um, and then for your lead sound, you have it at maybe, maybe zero, or maybe a little bit higher. That's probably all the adjustment you're gonna need, but if you wanted to make it louder, you could use the overall level control uh, and get an even bigger boost, you know. Um, but um, yeah, so as far as EQ goes, there is more to it, but that's kind of, 
the basics, you know. So, uh, so what I what I do is probably watch this a few times, get your head around it. I, I apologise if I if I repeat myself, <laughs> uh, and uh, and just just experiment, you know. I mean, you, you'll tell if you're going too far because you'll get that horrible distortion, that crackly kind of sound where you know something's not right. So, if that happens. Just turn the turn the gain down, whether it's a low frequency gain, the high frequency gain, the overall level, whatever it is you need to do, just to just to sort of clean it up, and um, and yeah, that that's that should that should do you, you know. So I'm going to leave it there. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, please join me again next time, and I'll talk talk more technical stuff for you. <laughs> Cheers.